Hello, uh, my name is Jordan Davis. I'm the director of Smart Columbus, and it's great to be with the Urban Technology Alliance to share with you some of the things we've been working on. We were fortunate enough to be the sole winner of the US Smart Cities Challenge in 2016. And since then, we've really used that as a seed to think holistically about the future of mobility and how we can use technology to improve people's lives. If I think back to 2016, when we were competing in this challenge, I think there were a few key reasons why we, we ended up being the winner. One is we really are a test market. We're a mid-sized city in the heart of America. We are uh, one of the fastest growing cities in the Midwest, and we experience a lot of the same urban challenges as our big cities, but really as extremely relatable to the majority of mid-sized cities, not just in the United States, but around the world. And so we believe that the pilots that we are deploying and have been deploying um, are things that can others can learn from uh, as well. So we are making this investment go further. Additionally, we have a vision about deploying the technology that really puts the person at the center. And we're trying to improve our community in the use of technology, just not deploying technology for technology's sake. And last, I would say, is really our X factor, which is what we call the spirit of the Columbus Way. It's our commitment to public and private partnerships, and that we've walked the walk in every aspect of this program. Um, and from the very beginning, we were able to secure $90 million of new aligned investment from our partners in the region uh, to match the grant. And since we've been able to take that up to about $720 million. Uh, and it's really helped us to go beyond the grant um, and think holistically about the community of the future that we want to bring to life. So when you think of uh, this investment, I really think of um, the future of mobility in an acronym called CASE, and that mobility will be more connected, autonomous, shared, electric, and it'll be supported by data. So for the time I have with you, I'm going to briefly just highlight a few of the pilots that are underway and happening within our community. The first, I would encourage you to check out the Smart Columbus operating system. It's the largest investment of the US Department of Transportation. It's managed by the city of Columbus, built on all open source technology, um, and is really the, the home of all the data of the projects and where it is um, published. But long-term, we think that this will scale to a more regional integrated data exchange, um, looking more holistically at our transportation ecosystem. In terms of connected vehicle technology, we, along with many other regions across the country and even within our in cities, even within our own region, um, are deploying connected vehicle technology on intersections in their communities. Um, ours are on in urban environments, and there are um, opportunities for residents to volunteer to put uh, onboard units onto their vehicles, as well as onboard uh, units being installed on public fleets. Uh, the installations are occurring right now. You can learn more about how we've gone about uh, doing that at the website shared on this slide. Uh, but we are very encouraged with the participation rate um, and are optimistic about the findings of this pilot. You'll be able to find the data on the operating system, as I mentioned, um, and really supporting the R&D in this space. On the autonomous vehicle front, we have deployed two autonomous vehicles. Um, one began in downtown Columbus as a circulator, really as a teaching and learning tool, um, really focusing in on how do we build trust for this technology and its deployment and investment in our community. Uh, we believe we were successful at that with over 16,000 rides um, given on here and from the surveys really increasing um, the, the trust factor of the technology. However, we did figure out that that use case really wasn't um, dependent enough to warrant sustained investment in that route. Um, we use those learnings, however, in the operation and uh, the design of the program to take to the USDOT funded deployment in a neighborhood called Linden. Linden is a lower income neighborhood in our community that suffers from a variety of inequities um, and one of which really limits the access to opportunity is mobility. Um, and our mayor is excellent at um, really setting the vision for our community that mobility is the great equalizer of the 21st century. 
And the vision of this project was that we could solve for the first mile, last mile gap with this self-driving vehicle. Um, as the pandemic has uh, impacted our community, as in every other community in the country, we've shifted the use case to critical food delivery from a food pantry to a large residential development in the neighborhood. And that's currently still operating on our roadways and will be through next year. Shared mobility, we think, really is the future, and it's a full ecosystem supported and anchored by our public transportation system. We are the largest mid-sized community uh, without a light rail system, but we do have an excellent bus system. So definitely would be remiss not to celebrate CODA's leadership and being recognized as an outstanding mid-sized public transit agency for the second time in three years. And a lot of that is because of their forward thinking nature and thinking about their role um, as moving all people and connecting people to a variety of different ways to move. Um, the city led the investment of six mobility hubs along a bus rapid transit line, bringing docked bike sharing into the neighborhood for the first time. Um, also has introduced a multimodal trip planning and common payment system that allows you to seamlessly book, pay, plan a trip in one app. Um, our community in general is continuing to invest in mobility around these uh, programs with providing free bus fare for all downtown employees. And that's a public private uh, investment here in the community that's actually been renewed amidst the pandemic, which is a very promising commitment to continuing to support uh, shared mobility options. And then lastly is electric. Uh, this was the primary focus of the philanthropic grant uh, funded by Paul G. Allen Family Foundation. And its aim was to really electrify the transportation sector and take a market that uh, was really uh, below uh, average. And I would say we were probably one of the laggards um, in the electrification uh, adoption curve prior to this grant. And think about how a community can really leap ahead in the means of three years. We completed this grant in uh, June was when we completed our final report. Uh, and we achieved our goal. Uh, we wanted to increase adoption by nearly 500%. Uh, we started out at 0.38% of all new vehicle sales were electric, aimed to get to 1.8%, um, exceeded the percentage of sales and exceeded the total car sale goal as well. We are fortunate to have a very close partnership with our utility, AEP Ohio, who invested alongside of us in a pilot rebate program that dramatically expanded the um, charging network uh, throughout our region. But we wouldn't be able to achieve a lot of these goals without a collective action agenda. The city could not have done this alone, um, especially a lot of the things I mentioned, while technically have great technology behind them, also require a culture shift. And we enlisted about 71 employers uh, to work alongside of us across five goals. And we called this the Accelerator Partner Program. Um, and these partners have worked throughout the years um, to achieve these goals that has really helped us meet our community goals. And this is an incredible framework that was wildly successful and we look forward to evolving this um, as we look forward in our work. Um, and just as the private sector has done, so has the public sector around us. Um, Beyond the grant, we've seen a lot of investment in the future of mobility in our community, whether it's a smart campus strategy at The Ohio State University, one of the largest universities in the country, um, to investment in a private proving ground for autonomous vehicles, um, going after the Hyperloop. There's a lot of activity that really make up a full smart region uh, ecosystem around mobility. If anything I shared with you is interesting, I hope it provokes conversation, um, but more so, I hope that you come and, and learn more and actually share more with us. We would love to learn what you guys are working on um, and, and share what, what we've learned along the way. So we have a playbook online at accelerateyourcity.com. Uh, check that out and feel free to reach out to me as well. And I just appreciate um, all that the cities around the country are doing. We have learned so much from other people. Um, this is a, hopefully a representation of a lot of inputs uh, from many of you and uh, from your communities. So I, I think the smart city space 
is uh, a place where we all have a role to play and we will we will achieve the future we all want if we work together. So um, thanks for having me and I look forward to the discussion.